Hi, my name is Tristan Long, and today I will be giving a persuasive argument on environmental ethics and why the Earth should be given moral consideration. A question that has been brought up and argued about in society for as long as I can remember is whether the Earth and the environment should have moral consideration. There are gener generally two different ways, two different perspectives that you can look at this from. First is the internal perspective, where you look at it from the basis of yourself, your own point of view, or in this case, one side of the argument, which would be the human side, because that is the side that that person would be arguing on. The other perspective that you could argue from is an external point of view, which is looking at it from both sides um, of the argument, which in this case would be the environment and the people's side of the argument. So there is the self um, selfish side of the argument where you look at it from you just your perspective and then there's the selfless side of the argument where you look at it from both perspectives and in this speech i will be arguing that we need to take into consideration um, the environment and give it moral consideration because it isn't here just to live and work for us. It isn't here just for the benefit of humanity. It is its own thing outside of ourselves. Now, there is a person who does not necessarily believe in this, and he does not believe that the earth should be given moral consideration. And that person is William Baxter. And he argues a different side of the argument in his essay, People or Penguins. So he starts his essay with four main claims. The first claim that he gives is the spheres of freedom, where he says that just because it isn't um, made that a collective group needs to do something or that a collective group ne maybe necessarily shouldn't do something, that doesn't mean that a certain individual does not have a right to do that thing. The second claim is that waste is a very bad thing. And he means this by saying that there aren't enough resources in the world for us to waste any of them. There are too many people that need those resources, and therefore we cannot waste any resources that we could um, attain. The third is that people need to be treated as ends and not means. And this claim is actually very, very similar to Immanuel Kant's claim of virtually the same nature, that people should be treated as ends um, in themselves and not means to ends. Every person should be treated as ends in themselves. And his last claim is both the incentive and the opportunity to improve his share of satisfactions should be preserved to every individual. So Baxter then gives an example, which he uses um, penguins in. And he says that there is DDT um, that is in food that is causing damage to penguins. And Baxter thinks that that shouldn't be a problem for people if it is causing more good for people, even if it's harming penguins. And he uses six claims in order to, to defend this, um, to any objections that could come up because of, of the claim that we shouldn't care if it's harming penguins, if it's doing a lot of good. So these are his six rebuttals. First is that no other position corresponds to the way people think. Second is that this doesn't mean that there is necessarily, even if it seems that we're going to be doing dentro nature, I mean, humans depend on nature. Therefore, there isn't going to be any severe detriment to nature because we depend on it. Um, third is that what is good for people is generally good for the environment. Therefore, most of what humans will do is generally good for um, the environment. Um, he kind of combines the fourth and fifth and say there is no other way to go about this because he doesn't believe that there is a way to know or understand what the environment or the penguins um, need. And lastly, when we use, well, the word we use in this argument is ought. And since ought is um, just a, a human word, it's a human concept, no other animals can, can think in the form of ought, then this is just something that should be decided by humans, which would be what would be best for humans. 
he makes another claim at the end of this section where he says that there is no way for us to know what is right or wrong for the environment because it has no way of speaking, has no way of telling us. So he believes, uh, an example he gives is clean air. It's like, how do we know what clean air is? There is no way to know what clean air, there's no way to know what is right and wrong in that situation. So I have a problem with Baxter's claims. And one of my biggest problems comes in his fifth and sixth claim in his rebuttals with the uh, penguin example. And he says this quote, someone must tell me how much each one counts and someone must tell me how these life forms are to be permitted to express their preferences when it comes to the fifth claim. Now he uses the language of count here, which is quite a utilitarian way of thinking, it's thinking that each person has a unit to measure. And I mean, if we're going to talk in the sense of count, then how much do people count? How do we know how much people count in comparison to the environment? I mean, there's no way he doesn't explain this idea of, of counting. Um, and a second, if there was a, a person that couldn't add, or had no way to express themselves, they w weren't able to speak or express what they wanted or what they thought was right, how do we count that person? Is the way you count only by what people say or, or do? And what if what people say or do are incongruent with how they actually feel or think should be done? The whole idea of counting or having something count is not explained very well by, um, by Baxter. And another thing to, um, that I, I don't think that he does a very good job with explaining is um, when he says that there's no way to say what is right and wrong for the environment. Um, why do we have to know? Why, why does it matter? Just because we don't understand something doesn't mean that it just simply doesn't exist or doesn't have a way of being or doesn't have a way to be right and wrong. I mean, there are so many things in history that people didn't understand or didn't know at the time. And just because they didn't know them at the time does not mean that they didn't exist. I mean, for so long, we did not know that the earth went around the sun. But that doesn't mean that the earth didn't go around the sun in that time. Just because we don't know what is right and wrong for the environment doesn't mean that there isn't a right and wrong for the environment. Humans don't need to have so much control over everything that they that they desire to, to control, which is everything. So one thing that Baxter could say in response to my objection would be that I didn't have any first objection to his first four claims. And if I have no objection to his first four claims, then I have no real objection at all. But that is not true. Just because I didn't find a problem with what he said in the first four um, claims doesn't mean that that list is an all-encompassing one. I believe that there should be more that is added to that list. Like, there should be a certain way that people approach situations. And that way should be in a selfless manner, in a manner that isn't from that just internal perspective, but from an external perspective too, take both sides of the argument before you approach the argument. Environmental ethics is a vast and extremely important thing to consider and understand. And what is even more important within this argument is that the environment should have moral consideration. It is not here just for humans. It was here before us and it will be here after us. And therefore it is not here just for our own desire and just for us to need, just for us to use for whatever we want. That's not why it's here. So what I'm calling you all to do is to go out into your communities and give and participate in charities that help go against deforestation, that help take down these factories that are polluting our air. Make a difference and speak for the thing that cannot speak for itself.